social science in the early days had some controversy about it. Regardless of the risky business psychologists had going on, they also found some robust findings that are still valid and applied today. It turns out that if you care less about ethics, you can find out some pretty interesting things about how people work. The experiment I am going to present in this video is primarily an experiment about how people learn. Psychologists like Jean Piaget, Vygotsky, Skinner and Albert Bandora all have their take on learning, which should tell us that human beings learn in different ways. This video will focus on Albert Bandura's theory, which is a social learning theory in the field of observational learning. Observational learning involves learning skills and behaviors through observing the behavior of others. Social learning theory emphasizes that human beings learn by socializing. If there's at least one thing all academics agree upon, which isn't many things to be honest, it is the claim that human beings are social creatures. We risk death when we isolate ourselves and tend to flourish when we have healthy relationships with others. In addition to this, Bandura was strongly inspired by behaviorism psychology. In short, behaviorism is the theory that people repeat actions that are rewarded and refrain from doing actions that are punished. Behaviorism is most notably a field that is associated with Burris Frederick Skinner and Bandura was inspired by him. Bandura added a more complex dimension to behaviorist theory by claiming that observable action only partly shows the reality of learning. People can have knowledge of actions without necessarily acting them out. Behaviorists like Skinner was more focused on what was observable, the action itself, while Bandura admitted that a person might have learned an act without necessarily acting it out but that the person will act out a certain action if the person knows that there is a reward for it. Let's now look at the experiment. Bandura studied 72 children, and his aim was to investigate how people learn by imitating others, especially how kids learn from adults. There were 36 boys and 36 girls in his study. He further divided them into three groups of 24 kids per group. The children were individually put into a room containing different types of toys. The first group was shown a footage on a TV screen where they saw an adult behaving aggressively towards the doll. The adult was abusing the doll by kicking, punching, pushing, throwing and using a hammer to hurt it and even verbally assaulting the doll. The second group saw a video of an adult cuddling with a doll, being gentle with it and playing with it like it was a friend. The third group was what scientists call a control group. A control group is just there to test if the results in the other two groups are random or not. If the control group show the same results as one of the other two groups, then the study is of low quality and its results cannot be trusted. Thus, the control group were not shown any video. At the end of the videos that the two first groups watched, the adult was either punished, rewarded, or there were no consequences at all. After watching the video, the children were then given an identical doll to the one that they had just seen in the video. Each child was left alone for 20 minutes with a doll, and the scientists were watching them through a one-way mirror. Here are the results. Children who observed the aggressive model were far more aggressive towards the doll than the children who watched a non-aggressive model and the control group. The girls in the aggressive model condition also showed more physically aggressive responses if the model they were watching was male, but more verbally aggressive responses if the model was female. Boys were more likely to imitate same-sex models than girls, which essentially means that boys mostly imitate men, 
while girls didn't prefer to look up to one gender over the other. Boys imitated more physically aggressive acts than girls. Generally, there was little difference in verbal aggression between boys and girls. And the children were far more likely to be violent with a doll if they observed a model that got rewarded for its violence, or if the model didn't face any consequences at all. The Bobo doll experiment clearly demonstrates the power of learning by observing and imitating others. It is highly relevant for today's society, even though the study was conducted in the 1960s. The children were observing a person on a screen, and today screens are everywhere for almost all children, which influences their behavior in too many ways. The role influencers and celebrities have in all of this is beyond comprehension. What kind of behaviors are the Kardashians putting in young people's minds, for example? Remember that the reward of an act had a big impact on if the children copied that act or not. And the Kardashians, with their beautiful houses, cars, holidays, fancy clothing and social media recognition, certainly signals that their behavior is rewarded. Another example, on the other end of the spectrum, is the Tate brothers. They also have a big following and signal to boys that their behaviors and philosophy is highly rewarded in the form of pretty women, sports cars, big following, toned bodies, fancy cigars, and respect among the people around them. We have yet to see the full impact the behavioral patterns of these celebrities have had on the generation growing up today. Please tell the YouTube algorithm that my videos should be seen more by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I will see you next week.